Chuck Swindoll, he's from Houston, Texas, and was in the Marine Corps. Got the call, got the call to ministry, got out of the Marine Corps, um, had a, you know, a church in California. And then he settled back into Texas, his, you know, his home state up in the Dallas area. Um, and so, you know, uh, I, I contribute a lot with, with his teaching, uh, with, uh, with me becoming a Christian at 16 years old, just because my mom would play Chuck Swindoll in the morning before I'd go take the bus ride to school. And I'd listen to it, you know, I, she probably didn't know, she probably didn't think I was listening to it, but I would listen, um, you know, see what this old guy was talking about. And it just kind of made sense to me that how, how he presented the gospel. But anyway, she was she was listening to him on Thursday and uh, she brought up one, Psalm 139 about how Chuck kind of kind of talked about it. And it's funny because I went when I opened it uh, Friday night, just or Saturday morning to look, I was like, oh, man, look at that. I forgot I had written notes about Psalm 139. I thought I'd share it with you guys. So uh, if you guys can open up to Psalm 139, we'll start there and then and then and then we'll do the we'll do the, the survey that everyone's been been uh been asking about and actually retook it and some of my spiritual gifts have changed but i think i know why and i'll tell you why <laughs> well let's go to psalm 139 first and i hope everyone brought a pen or a pencil or something uh because it's okay to write in your in your bible i don't know if anyone's told you you shouldn't but it's okay to write notes in your bible so um if I could have someone read uh, verses one through six, someone volunteer to read verses one through six, someone else volunteer to read seven through 12. Uh, let me get a third person to read 13 through 18 and then someone else to carry out the rest of uh, the rest of the Psalm from 19 to 24. Yep. One, three, nine. All right. So who's going to take one through six. All right, Patrick, who's going to take seven to 12. All right, uh, Ashley, I had her hand up first. You beat you. All right, you can take you can take thirteen to eighteen, Jen. <laughs> you can take thirteen to eighteen. If I can have someone finish out nineteen through twenty-four. Who said nineteen through twenty-four? Who's gonna take that last portion? Okay, awesome. All right, uh, go ahead, Patrick. Your pens out or pencils and verses one through six i want you to write in there you can draw a little back bracket to connect one through six <clears throat> god knows me all right god knows me because in those verses it's very evident that wherever you are that god knows your thoughts he scrutinizes your past even when you're laying down he knows you he's intimately my my bible says intimately acquainted with all of my ways Right. Even before there's a word on my tongue, God knows it. You know? um, 
You know, he laid his hand upon me. You know, such such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high. I cannot attain it. You know, and, and it's funny that that verse there, verse six, uh, I often feel that way when I stop and, and just kind of, you know, be quiet during my quiet time. And, and I figure out, you know, wow, you know, if you truly try to comprehend God, it's just, it's just, a, you know, it, it's too high. You know, you, you can't attain it. It's just so much for the brain to truly comprehend that, you know, uh, you just really, you really can't understand it. You know, if, if you think about the, the universe alone, you know, that, you know, you look at planet Earth and how perfectly it's, it's fit so that way we can have, you know, an ecosystem. And, you know, you look, you go to one planet to the left, one planet to the right, and it just can't sustain anything. You know, um, you know how Earth can fit in, I don't know how many Jupiters, like, I don't know how many Earths can fit in, in, into one Jupiter because Jupiter is so massive. There, there's a book, a really, really good book called uh, Privilege Plan hmm. by Guillermo Gonzalez and Jay Richards, both, both PhDs. And, and it lays out, Guillermo Gonzalez is an astrobiologist who studies life in the cosmos, prior to. But in his studies, he found that Earth was so situated and so designed, and the cosmos was so situated and so designed as to make this place a very special place indeed. The mathematical precision that is needed for Earth to exist and to be able to sustain life is the odds are astronomical that could happen. It's a great book. I have it if anybody wants to borrow it. But if you want to understand what Chris was talking about, the specialness of this place and the exact design, the exact design that it took God for us to be able to sit here today. Yeah, it's remarkable. All right, and then verses 7 through 12, connect those three, four, those six verses uh, right in the margins. God is with me. All right, God is with me. 7 through 12, God is with me. Um, and if you read in there, you know, the psalmist David is, is saying, no matter where I go, I can go in, in the depths of hell, right? That's uh, Shul is another word for, for, I guess, the underground, right? Place of the dead. Yeah, place of the dead, hell, whatever. No, well, I guess not, but... God is with me. Even if I go there, God is with me, right? No matter where you go, you can make your let you know make your bed anywhere. Go to the remotest parts of the sea, you know. Go go on the wings of the dawn, and, and still God will be there with you. You know, you know. If I say in verse eleven, if I say, surely the darkness will overwhelm me, and the light around me will be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you, and the night is as bright as day. Um, you know, God, God is with you. And then verses 13 through 18, uh, right in those margins, God made us. God made us. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is, this is an argument for, you know, for, for why, you know, for the sanctity of life. Um, it's because God, it, you know, each and every person, you know, no matter, uh, you know, what, what our society would say, you know, deformities, they, they come out with God made them. God made them special for a reason, for a purpose. Um, I took a class, I forgot what, what the class was in, in college. It was my junior year in college. And it, you know, it, it was something to do with, 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 with I, forget, I think sensory and perception is what it was called. I was, I was as a psychology major. But we started with, with human life and we saw this probably hour long video of, of how a baby is formed in the womb. And I just never thought about it. When I saw that, I was like, whoa, like there's no way that, you know, that, that just happened. You know, it's, it's, it's remarkable how, how each stage of, you know, of life in the womb, you know, by day, by hour, um, you know, that baby is being formed. And again, it's not by accident. You know, it's, it's God has his fingerprint on, on each and every child. Um, and, you know, something that kind of amazed me was that, you know, everyone has a different fingerprint. That blows my mind. There's a, you know, I don't know how many people are on this earth, but each person, no matter what, no one has the same fingerprint. Like, you know, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, and again, that's because God made us, you know, Psalm, Psalm 119, verse 73, a different psalmist writes the same thing. God, you formed me. God, you made me, you know, in, in, in Genesis, you know, in the beginning, God made all this stuff, but he specifically made humans for a purpose. You know, he, he formed us. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, he didn't just speak. He actually took the time to form us and then breathe life into us, right? He says he, he breathed life into the nostrils of, of Adam and he came to life. Um, and, and, and again, he, 
he that was that was not an accident. He he had a purpose for us, um, and I just found that remarkable. And then it, it, Psalm one thirty nine kind of takes a, a turn in verse nineteen through you know nineteen through twenty four. Um, in in my opinion, how how I read it, how how Christian reads it is, um, David is dealing with really the injustice of, of whatever situation he's going through. Right? It seems like the you know the wicked always seem to get away with things. Um, you know, and, and, and how he dislikes that, you know, how he uses the word hate, how he hates that, how he loathes it, um, you know, and, and, and he's asking God to search him, you know, to, to try his anxious thoughts um, and to see if there's any way that's, that's, that's not pleasing to God, you know, and lead to lead him through the, you know, in, in, through God's righteousness. Um, but again, I, you know, a, a big reason why I love David is because even though he's so profound in his writings and his Psalms, He's still, you know, he's still, he's still a human, right? He's still, he's, he's not perfect. Um, and he still has those feelings of, of, of hatred, but yet he, he asked God for help, you know, and we should as well. Can I share how, how I have money right here? Yeah, did you? <laughs> All right, what'd you have? Uh, the same verses, but so what in my Bible, one through six, I labeled them his omniscience because it's talking about the knowledge of God and how vast is that knowledge. And the second bracket is his on uh, on the presence. He's everywhere. He's always with him. That's what it hasn't stated. So the last bracket is his omnipotence, his power, his might, so on and so forth. And the very last bracket, from nineteen to twenty-four, I have labeled our proper response mm. because David is having a proper response to what he has gone over in his mind. <laughs> now God had for him this moment. So now I hate what you hate. God. You know, I should search you. I surrender to you. I belong to you. So on and so forth. Yeah. Well, thank you. All right. Any questions about that song? All right. Well, all right. So I'm going to hand out these uh, spiritual gifts. If you don't have a pen, I could give you a pencil if you want. Okay, so spiritual gifts, there's a, there are about three, I asked Pastor Jeff if he had any examples, and he gave me three, and I think out of the three, this was the best one. Uh, it went more to the spiritual gifts. There was another one that was very good as well, but it only hit a few spiritual gifts. It, it, it didn't hit many. Um, and the reason why I said, when I took the spiritual gifts is, it changes because um, once we get to the end, like for administration, the first time I took this exam, I scored very high on, on, on administration. And then since because of my job, I think, you know, when I ask some of those questions about administration and you won't know which questions they are, well, you, you might get an idea when, when you start looking at them. But I was like, no, I don't like doing that stuff anymore. I, I don't enjoy it. I do it because I have to do it because it's part of my job, but uh, I don't enjoy it. So, again, uh, um, just because you score low on, low on a spiritual gift does not mean that like, oh, I'm not going to I'm not going to help out in that area of the church. You know, if there's a need, then then by, by all means, you know, you have to step in and, and help with that. But if there's numerous people and someone's like, hey, you know, that's that's my thing. I like doing that. Then th then let that person do it, because if, if that's their spiritual gift, then they're going to excel a lot more than like, let's say I scored low, very low, low, low in shepherding. Right. I'm not going to be a pastor. You know, I'm, I'm not going to stand up and take, you know, Pastor Jeff's spot. So um, but take your time. Read through the questions. Uh, zero is I seldom or, 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 or never am this way. And then three is the highest number being like, yes, I, absolutely. I, I am this way most or all the time. Um, there's two pages here, page uh, two and three, uh, which have the scores. You're going to fill in your score in the shaded box. And then at the bottom, you'll add up those scores. And then at the very end, you'll transfer uh, all these scores here at the bottom that you tallied up. Uh, you'll transfer for them over on the back. And then you can uh, you can see what, what number you score the most on. Yes. Zero, one, two, three. There are six options. You'll see. Just yeah, just just.
Yes. It's not graded, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. 
You score a one on something? Yeah. I did too. I scored one. I scored one on the clock. What? I scored one on the clock. I scored one on the administration. That's a good example of you stepping in, though, you know? Like, to fill that role. Suck it up, but I got one on the clock. Uh, I, I left one with her. I'm interested to her. <laughs> and I have enough for, for Cheryl and uh, Krista to take one as well. Oh, yeah. Let's see what your spiritual gift is. I think I already know, but we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, zero is the lowest, three is the highest. Yeah, three is I am this way, most are all the time. Just put it in the shaded box. Yep. Gavin, Jonathan, you guys good? Or are you guys still taking the exam? We can start talking right now. Hey, so, so Pastor Jeff and I were talking over there by the uh, by the food bar over there. Is is I think the last time I took this was probably seven or eight, nah, six or seven years ago, um, and I scored very high on administration and leadership. And then some of the some some of the things I'm low on haven't changed. What I've noticed that administration has gone down to the middle, and giving. And uh, hospitality and leader and hospitality popped up uh, as well as, as well as with uh, with leadership. And I was telling Jeff, I was like, I, I think I know why. Is one because I do administrative administration work all the time at work. And when the question is asked, do you enjoy it? Do you like it? I was like, no, I don't. You know, so so that like that's bumped down now. Uh, it, you know, and I know Pastor Jeff as well. Some of his have have fluctuated with him being a the 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 lead pastor of our church. Uh, and it's just kind of interesting how how you're just because your spiritual gift right now doesn't mean it you, you may be the same way you know eight six seven eight years from now and that's probably good because it means that you're maturing God is well, that who, plus it's a beautiful example of God will give you if He calls you to a place yeah if He calls you to a job He will give you but I'm still low on teaching so 
It's number, I, I scored three points on teaching. That's, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. All right, uh, did anyone see anything that kind of like made you go, wow, other than Chris saying that she's low on administration, she's our church administrator. Any surprises, Any anything that you kind of like, okay, I, I knew that, or, or hey, I, I learned something new about myself that any of y'all want to share? <laughs> <laughs> no? Uh, What's your score high on, Chris? So I scored high on six administration, but then I also scored like a seven for exhortation, hospitality, and leadership, and service. So I, I kind of figured all those. But then they all made sense. The one thing that I was kind of surprised was I scored a three on teaching. Even though I'm an instructor and like I'm really good at teaching things, but I, I guess the reason why I scored really low on this is just because like my lack of like doctrinal and biblical knowledge. You know, because like I just don't I don't know enough about the Bible at like an intimate level where I feel confident teaching it or like, you know, even really talking about it to people outside of my church just because I don't know enough about it. Do you enjoy teaching? Like yeah, when, at work, at work, you, you enjoy it. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe we can say that, you know, the more you get intimate with your Bible, the more you study it on your own. That's a gift that God will, will maybe start to cultivate later on down the road. Six or seven years from now, maybe you'll be sitting here, you know, maybe less than that. I don't know, five, four years. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can even identify where, where God will begin to grow us, you know. Um. You guys want to share what you guys scored high and low on? Yeah, go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, so I scored high on something or else, and then I scored an eight, and then I scored an eight on what you're doing. But my lowest one was also teaching. I scored two teaching. Mm -hmm. I didn't say anything like, I don't know what you're doing, but I don't know what you're doing. I'm not going to be comfortable teaching. And that's all right. And one thing I, was, I thought it was weird is that I scored like average on it was evangelism. Why is that weird? Ashley, you want to share? You don't have to. Chris was saying. Yeah. And Bill, want to share? Yeah, go ahead, Don. Terry? I got zeros and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I got a bunch of eights. Uh, administration, evangelism, exhortation, giving, and hospitality. And I scored a zero literally in teaching. Really? Yeah, but I mean, I, I, I think maybe from teaching the Bible because I'm kind of way behind the fire curve. <laughs> And then shepherding was a four, and uh, service was a six, five, and prophecy, six in mercy, and seven in leadership. So it was high on the, the first the first group of questions, but high, yeah. and the second group was way low. Interesting. Well, much lower than the others. I'll go ahead, John. You got it. Go ahead. Well, let me just list the numbers for one. Uh, administration is a four. Uh, evangel evangelism is five, exhortation, seven. Giving five helps seven hospitality four leadership seven mercy seven uh, prophecy seven service five 
shepherding seven and teaching five. Um, I have no clue what my last one was. He said this one went down. Okay. So, you know what that means? <laughs> Kelly? Well, one thing I was going to say is that I think you made it really clear when you were having uh, what the last week or last week when you were discussing it. There's a difference between talent and gifts. Mm -hmm. That spiritual gifts is really specific to you know our faith, related to our faith. Um, so I think that that kind of explains a little bit. But my my two highest ones are administration and exhortation. And my lowest one for evangelism and teaching. So, and I feel like, yeah. Oh, we gotta catch me too. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just say, I don't like those questions of like, I want my instruction to cause others to see what God is saying and to respond because if that's what God wants, of course that's what I want. But, like, the other ones are like, do you enjoy? Well, no, I don't enjoy having no yeah, this. Look at it this way. Does it make you feel <laughs> feel when others understand the truth of God's word and tell us? Does that do anything for you? Does that make you happy? In a way, <laughs> in a way, fulfilling God's purpose makes you happy. So if that's fulfilling God, fulfilling God's purpose. Alright. Well, I got one like I got one for you right here, Chris. Um, just two babies, spiritual gifts. Um, all right, well, I'm glad everyone learned a little bit about themselves a little bit. And again, this will, you know, as, as you continue to mature in your faith, some things will, will shift around. Um, and uh, just just always be aware that, yeah, you know, these may be the, the, the gifts that, that God has given you uh, for a specific, you know, date and time or whatever. And that, uh, you know, that no matter what, even if you're placed in a position, you know, like me in teaching or, you know, Christian administration, that, that, that God will, will give you the resources to, to help you through all that. All right. I'm going to say something, too, on the teaching, because as I read the, uh, the description of the teaching, what that really means, the ability to research and explain God's truth, so it's understanding and uh, application in the Bible. And I've always said, it, I'm a functional reader. Mm -hmm. So I thought about that. You know, I only, only read when I want to learn something learn to do something but now we got youtube i don't read i just go to youtube um so yeah i can see why i score a little teach I, I i do not like to read because it's boring and the thing where i saw that i was most higher is when i was actively actively doing something with my hands or the interaction it's not to me really is very passive i'm not a passive um, so I can see that. I live a miserable life. I couldn't read. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I'd rather read than. Oh, yeah. I have a one. Yeah, we're about ready to pray. All right, we'll go ahead and close this out on prayer. And uh, get ready for church service. All right, gracious Lord, we thank you, God, for uh, again blessing us with this opportunity to come uh, share a little passage of scripture, Lord, uh, that, that you gave through. Through, uh, through David, and then also, Lord, to identify uh, where the gifted areas are that, that you've blessed us with. Um, God, I pray for, for us to, as a church, Lord, to, to use these gifts uh, for your glory and for the spreading of your message, Lord, uh, in our community and beyond. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.